Well, hey everybody, John Walls here with theCUBE, continuing coverage at AWS reInvent 22. It has been three really fantastic days here at the Venetian in Las Vegas, and we still have more to come. With us uh, to talk about uh, Persistent Systems is the Senior Vice President of Cloud at Persistent, Dominique Bastos. And Dominique, good to see you. Pleasure Thanks to see you. Thanks for joining us here on theCUBE. Thank you for having me. Oh, you bet, Thank you bet. You. All right, tell us about Persistent Systems. Uh, first off, uh, core focus, what you're up to, and then we'll jump in from there. Sure, sure. So Persistent Systems is a digital engineering solutions and services um, provider. They've been around for 32 years. Uh, doing software engineering, um, innovating in several areas within different verticals. Uh, there's over 22,500 uh, people at Persistent now, as mm. of my last count. Um, we're in 18 countries, mm. and in October we hit the one billion dollar annualized recurring revenue mark. Well, that's so a good yeah, that's a good number right it's, there. It's a good number. It's a, it's a great company. Um, it's been. Uh, such an interesting journey. I was with AWS for almost seven years mm -hmm. before recently joining Persistent, and um, it almost felt like a such a logical transition mm -hmm. um, in terms of bringing what I've seen in my entire career of interacting with customers and businesses to what Persistent can provide as people are looking to make uh, their journey to the cloud, whatever stage they might be at. So right, and we should point out, it's an SVP of cloud, but you're really, your focus is AWS. My right? focus is other AWS. Other options, other opportunities, right. but you're AWS all the way. Right, it's a multi-cloud company because uh, you know we really don't believe in dictating uh, to a customer what they need. Um, I think the benefit, the one of the um, differentiators for Persistent is the amount of legacy uh, history that they have across these industries and customers. I mean, mm -hmm. 32 years is a lot. Mm -hmm. And in terms mm -hmm. of like software engineering, so it's like really doing the, the, the hard work, the heavy lifting, mm -hmm. um, and then seeing what can actually be uh, commoditized, repeatable, building solutions within these verticals to help customers accelerate their transformations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we talk about cloud, I mean, this has been something that's been on the, the forefront for a long, feel like a long time, right? That um, but yet, there there are still many, and maybe you can help me out with that percentage, whatever, of companies who are either haven't begun yet, are just beginning, they're really in a nascent stage of, of this transformation. And um, yeah, I find it, I found it curious this week as we've talked with different people about, where are you in your journey and so on and so forth. A lot of people are way back, just starting past go, and aren't as mature as I would have thought. I mean, is that, do you find that to be the case? Absolutely, and there's there's many reasons for that. I mean, I think what I've started, I mean, I've been seeing it over the years, but we all know IT and business back then was very much kept separate. Two separate animals. Two separate animals, yeah. IT made the decisions, not in a vacuum, but almost in a vacuum, right? Now, obviously, companies who know it's necessary and have embraced it bring together the function of looking at the technological uh, solutions that they're adopting mm -hmm. to solve a business problem, right? But that business problem really is dictated by the customer need. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I have seen, you know, in terms of like the life cycle of a business adopting technology post cloud, there's a lot of enterprises that are still, they've made such big investments mm -hmm. in their legacy infrastructure mm -hmm. and in actually you know, the, the developers and the people that are maintaining those systems and the different uh, connections, to put it in layman's terms, between their systems and their customers' systems, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that entire scenario makes it very difficult for them to move. Mm -hmm. It's like moving a mountain. So uh, there's, I would say there's like three ways of looking at it. You have those that kind of want to revitalize mm -hmm. their technology, right? Their backend systems, they want to optimize costs, they want to, and I, my background in technology is specifically in data. I kind of, I mm -hmm. came up as a, as a DBA and built data models and 
I've always loved data before it was a thing to love data. So <laughs> you were so far ahead. Of I was the curve. I was ahead of the curve. Right, I was a trendsetter. What a trendsetter. I'm a trendsetter. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think from that perspective, um, they're looking at you know yeah. these these enormous of amounts of data that they've been capturing mm -hmm. in these legacy systems that they're so heavily invested in, but they're not able to derive the insights mm -hmm. um, to better serve their customers or to even innovate. Uh, new revenue streams from that data. But they're taking the first step to say, look, you know, we can actually operate more smoothly at a lower cost by moving to the cloud. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Then there are those that are looking to actually innovate mm -hmm. and create new revenue streams, monetize their data, look at opportunities to integrate feedback that they've been getting from their customers to provide new services. So they're using the cloud journey. They've probably already moved into the cloud. They're starting to look at analytics and potentially using mm -hmm. AI ML mm -hmm. to facilitate creating these solutions mm -hmm. and services. And then there's those that you know want to pioneer and break into new uh, inventions and, and ways of um, of solving the big world problems. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean. I think that's one thing I noticed in uh, this reInvent that I thought was so special is there's like a really big focus on humanity, mm -hmm. on humans, on, you know, as we were talking earlier, um, everything, and I myself am like holding books and right. I don't like people being on their phone when we're having a conversation. <laughs> right. But I think, you know, we are where we are. The mm -hmm. reality is the world has evolved in such a way that community is no longer, it takes a small village, all, you know, everybody knows each other, you have face-to-face -face interactions. You're not doing that with your customers either. There's digitally native businesses that have for a long time cropped up in the FinTech space and, mm -hmm. you know, you name the space, there's a startup that was born in the cloud mm -hmm. that can reach customers immediately and can provide a service that an enterprise that's kind of like weighed down mm -hmm. with their legacy systems, they can't pivot fast enough. So I think, you know, the, the pioneers think beyond that. How do we use quantum computing? You know, mm -hmm. how do we use 3D simulation to anticipate solving big world problems? Mm -hmm. Whether it's, you know, people no longer I don't know what the statistics are, but it's very sad um, that elderly people, you know, the, n the the amount of human contact that they have is mm -hmm. very little, you know, and um, if you could provide, I don't know, an, an experience, an immersive experience where their memories are triggered, mm -hmm. you know, to help them with dementia or Alzheimer's. Sure. I mean, those types of things, those are the things that I think that's what excites me about mm -hmm. the launches that it, I see it, um, at reInvent. And, and I think the innovation, you know, you have to take that journey. Mm -hmm. Unless you're born in the cloud, you do have to kind of take that journey. You got to get there. You have to get right, there, sure. but it's so worth it. So how about, let's just say, if I'm a health sciences company or I'm a pharmaceutical or whatever, and, and so I've got this desire to create this new opportunity, you know, with a human, I say, but yeah, but, if you're also, if you're persistent systems and you're working with you know, somebody in FinTech or somebody in Ag or whatever, you can't really understand my challenges or my problems. I mean, how do you wear those different hats so you can identify not only what the, the, the focus of that client is, but also their technology and how you're going to get them to marry up so they can achieve their goals? Well, the beauty of being you know, in a company with teams of people that you work with, my, uh, I, I cut across industries, right? So we have vertical uh, leaders that have very deep subject matter expertise mm -hmm. in any one of, n any number of those areas. You know, we're working with genomics, for example. So for example, you know, we engage with a customer that we've been helping over the past 32 years mm -hmm. Uh, use technology to bring services to their customers. And now we're seeing an opportunity to help them innovate 
to keep up for their business for obvious reasons, but also to, to supply their customers with um, the new uh, the new innovative solutions within that industry, mm -hmm. right? Because you need that vehicle to, to kind of deploy and deliver what mm -hmm. customers need. Um, the way we do it is from end to end, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we can, we have in the partnership with AWS, we're a partner of AWS and as such, we're able to collaborate with AWS and their customers or bring our customers to the cloud um, for all the way from assessment to planning to execution and even within persistent, we have ways to main, uh, operationalize the maintenance of these solutions. So it's really um, a very easy managed services type framework that we work under. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like migration planning, we have competencies within AWS uh, for looking at migrations. We have AIML, we have DevOps. Mm -hmm. So we have the various competencies aligned with AWS mm -hmm. to be able to execute at whatever stage the customer is. But also in terms of like the accelerators that we provide or the frameworks to mm -hmm. look at total cost, um, that cuts across, right? And then we don't kind of like, here's what you needed and buy, <laughs> never speak to <laughs> us again. I mean, I think the beauty of this company and what I really loved uh, when I was first speaking to them is the depth of the relationships with their customers mm -hmm. and the longevity of them. Um, so they've really seen their customers grow. And, um, you can only do that if you're there for the long run. You've got to be present. You have to be sure. present. So how do you how do you handle the if, if people are making this transformation and they're moving into the cloud, but they're, the people they have on staff might not be familiar with it, right? They have great expertise in what they've been doing on these legacy systems, but now they're you're moving, you're migrating to a new world, new culture, new environment, and um, and you got to get them up to speed, and that's not easy, nope. right? So. What do you do, or what does what Persistent suggest, or, or what are you doing with regard to closing that gap and to making that bridge so that they can maintain a little bit on their own? Yeah. They can execute and implement on their own yep. a little bit. They don't need somebody there to stand mm -hmm. over their shoulder the whole time. I won't geek out on having uh, joined AWS in professional services yeah. way back when uh, to migrate a major company to the cloud and having lived through painstakingly all those problems mm -hmm. and blockers and adoption roadblocks that you speak of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the way Persistent handles it is what I would have done myself, right? Uh, if I were to start a company and say, how do we help customers simplify their cloud journey and remove the complexity? I think that's what Persistent Systems does. Mm -hmm. um, we There's training programs that we're aligned to with AWS. Mm -hmm. um, so there's upskilling of development teams, application developers. Um, we collaborate from the top down with executives to look at the resources that they have available. Obviously, mission critical um, systems that cannot sacrifice having mm -hmm. engineers pulled away for a new project. You know, you take that into account. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when I spoke earlier about assessments, mm -hmm. you're not just assessing what needs to be lifted and shifted or refactored or um, re-architected. You're looking at, you know, all these applications that are going to move to the cloud, who owns them? You mm -hmm. know, uh, do you have a CI, CD pipeline or a data pipeline built? Well, we're going to need that, right? So. The, the continuous integration, continuous development of applications, that type of DevOps, obviously security also, DevSecOps, mm -hmm. we look at it from end to end as well. We have a very strong security practice. So all those advisory pieces we have, but we also have the capability to execute on it, mm -hmm. where we're not just coming in and saying, well, this is what you should do. We're kind of in there saying, this is, what you should do, here's how we can get you started. And then, you know, it's a, a collaborative effort with our customers to mm -hmm. see how much they still want us to stay mm -hmm. versus how much they want to take over. Right, it's nice to have a friend. Yeah, <laughs> who doesn't need a and friend? And Persistent <laughs> Systems 
is your friend. Dominic, thanks for the time. Oh, my pleasure. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for again being here for having me. On the Cube. You bet. Absolutely. You are watching the Cube, as you well know, the leader in high tech coverage.